All right, y'all. Welcome back to the Real Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Jordan Match. This is your other co-host, uh, Goda, with me. And we got a good uh, podcast today. It's an early morning one, so it's yes, going to be a little interesting. Usually, we Yo, you can hear me. this shit at night. Yeah, we can all hear you, so we're all good, bro. All right, bet. Usually, we record this shit at night, so it's a little type of... It's a little bit different energies today, so... Oh, yeah, a little more slower. Yeah, you know, Goda just woke up. I know, Hell yeah. You're getting this shit ready, but we finna have a good podcast. We finna have a good podcast. Yes, sir. Let's just jump right into it, bro. Start off with the first story. Pop Smoke's gravesite was vandalized. That shit's so fucked up, bro. Um, you guys, you have to be obsessed. Like, I, like, bro, like, okay, I can see whatever your problems are when he's alive, right? That's, that's, mm-hmm. that's valid, you know, just valid, you know? Anything yeah. goes in that life, you know? Mm-hmm. But like, bro, when he's not even here, bro, like, what what can you do? Like, now you're just making family members like hurt, you know? That's what I'm saying. You're just pissing off the family now for no reason. They ain't do nothing too. For real, bro. There's so many other people that in whatever. I don't know the politics of whatever life they're living, you know, the gang or whatever. But I know that there's other people, bro, that you could target. I mean, I'm not trying to wish that on nobody, bro. I'm saying like. But, like, obviously, there's other people, bro, that, like, if you have problems with the, whoever they are, bro, mm-hmm. and there's people who are alive, bro, you're going up to somebody who's not even here, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, it, you, if you got live ops, why are you fucking with the dead ones? Yeah, like, <laughs> that shit, that <laughs> shit doesn't give you bro. no points, bro. Like, nobody looks at you like, oh, this dude's crazy. Like, it doesn't give you cool points. So let's, let me kind of, like, preface this, this story a little bit more. So this happened sometime between Friday and Saturday afternoon. This happened during the day, so people don't really know what the fuck it went down. Uh, they found joints on the on the floor, scuff marks, kind of indicating that something was dragged. They don't know what though, and no arrests have been made so far. So they twelve don't know what the fuck to do right now. Is he buried in New York? Yeah. So he's a he has a a crypt. In Brooklyn, so he's not like buried. He's not like in the ground. So they didn't have to like dig up or nothing like that. But um, he was like in this like marble crypt. So you can kind of like drag him out of that or something. Yeah, bro, that shit's sick. So we don't know if they got the casket out or almost got the casket out. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. But it was reported earlier this week. That Pop Smoke's mom had to clean that shit up, which is the sad part. I swear, bro, because when you see Pop Smoke's mom, like, see that interview she was in with Pop Smoke's brother? Mm-hmm. She looked like a sweet lady, bro, like, you know? Yeah. Like, it's like you put into her through all that shit. And I know, like, bro, I'm, I'm not going to act like, cause obviously, bro, we all know Pop Smoke was living that life, you know, like, before the rap shit, you know, like, mm-hmm. yeah, watching all his interviews, you know, all his shit that he used to talk about. And like, I don't know, bro. I just don't. I don't think. I don't think you deserve that after you're not here. I think anything goes when you're here because that's the life you're living. You know, like mm-hmm, yeah. they, they, even they know that, bro. Like the niggas who are in their life, they know that anything goes. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But like, when you're not here, bro, like what, what do you have to prove? Like, what, what are you proving about doing that? You know what I mean? Like that's that's bogus. It's foul, bro. Exactly. Like, go, fuck with, go fuck with somebody who's alive, bro. Pop Smoke's mom even posted about this on Instagram. She posted twice. One picture was a picture of uh, the crypt. Uh, in the caption, she wrote, uh, we cleaned up. We sat and talked to each other and to him. And then in, in another post, she wrote, whoever you are, you have my attention. Now what? So they got the mom mad now, too. And yeah. that's even more dangerous, bro. You don't want to get the mom mad. <laughs> Literally, bro. That shit don't, like, it doesn't look good, bro. Like, you fucking with this dude's, like, family now, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I guess they don't care, bro. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. New York is known to be having, like, some of, like, the grimiest, like, gang life, you know? Like, a lot of shit happens there. That's true. A lot, a lot of killings, a lot of just grimy shit, bro. You know, look at 6 9 shit. Mm-hmm. 6 9 mm-hmm. A lot of that Brooklyn shit, bro. Like. Yeah. It's weird, bro. It's like, bro, I don't, like, like they know, no hate towards Brooklyn and New York, but, like, mm-hmm. I know they know that there's some grimy niggas there, bro. Like, I know that. They'll tell you that, bro. They'll tell you that. Toronto's pretty dangerous, too. 
Yeah, Toronto is like low key. Like, I feel like they a lot of influence from New York, from Canada. That's facts, bro. Like Toronto and New York kind of go like hand in hand sometimes. Like the fashion, like the, the style, like, you know what I mean? Just mm-hmm. the way they talk, yep. the music. Exactly. Like they're all doing drills. So I mean, it's like it's kind of crazy. Yeah, bro. No, that shit. It's it's like it's just sick, bro. That you gotta do that shit because. He's not even here, bro, to even, like, do anything back. I mean, people could... I'm not going to get into that, bro. I don't know about no gang life, you know? I don't wish nothing bad, bro. I wish people would just mm-hmm. leave each other alone, you know? Like, honestly, Damn. like, he's not here no more, bro. Just fucking leave him alone. I think it was reported earlier, earlier either today or yesterday, that um one of Pop Smoke's killers just got denied bail. So... Good, good fucking looks. Good fucking yeah, bro. Because I'm not going to lie, it did take him a minute to find who killed him, bro. It did, bro. And they're it just kids. Like, I, like, they're kind of like kids, too, or something like that, aren't they? Like, yeah. Young. I think one was like 15. Yeah, that shit's crazy, bro. That shit's like, sad, bro. Don't be doxing yourself, bro. Like, the whole kind of reason the shit went down is because... <laughs> You could see Pop's address, bro. You could see yeah. where he was staying out in L.A. On that bag. Yeah, but that shit. I was like, and then, bro, I remember when that shit happened, right? Like, you were seeing, like, people post about it. And, like, one of the girls, like, one of, one of these girls, bro, that, like, Pop Smoke invited, like, because, you know, he had hoes and shit, obviously. Nigga's a rapper. But, mm-hmm. like, he had, like, he invited girls to this shit all the time. And one of the girls that had been around him was like, yeah, like, when I was around him, you could just tell, like, he lived, like, this carelessly, like, nonchalant, like, was open with everybody, you know, and didn't really watch for his surroundings and shit. So, and that's coming from a girl who don't even know him, bro, you know what I mean? Like, so if you can see yeah. that shit, bro, as an outsider, like, that shit, you gotta change how you're moving, bro, because, like, that shit is not good, bro, you know what I mean? Like, to always like when you blow up and you have all these people around you just because you never had it before, mm-hmm. like that shit is sad, bro. Sad as fuck. That's, not, that's what I'm saying. It's like that's kind of like the, the, the debate over like getting security or not because there's two ways to that. There's yeah. like okay, you get security, people don't think you're hard. You yeah. don't get security, shit happens to you, and then you yeah. need security. So like. Like, either way, something's going to happen to you. Something, they're going to think something. So It's all about people's egos, too, bro. Like, all these people don't have security because, like, oh, if I get security, then I'm going to look like this pussy, bro. Like, bro, it's your life. Mm-hmm. The fuck? You know, like, nigga, nobody cares. Like, bro, when we get up, bro, like, I'm having security with me. Because I'm a civilian, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not no gang. Yeah. But, like, we're civilians, bro. But still, bro, like, those people who are in gangs, bro, and they blow up. They think that, oh, like, I can't roll with security because, you know, if my op catching me, he going to be all your pussy. Mm-hmm. Bro, comments and words and opinions, bro, are, they they matter way less than your actual life, bro. Like, you know what I mean? I don't give a fuck. Because mm-hmm. put away all that gang shit, all that, all that stuff, bro, you're still human. You know what I mean? Put, like, that's, yeah. you're, still, you're still human, bro. Like, I don't think, in my term, in my eyes, bro, I don't think anybody should be. We look at it as scary for one to protect themselves, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Yeah, it's just that that persona kind of gets in the way sometimes. Yeah, I that's mean, what like, it is. But, like, if you're not, like, a hard rapper, you're not, like, claiming to be hard or nothing like that, I mean, shit. Right, that's what I'm that's saying. Like, like, who, bro, I think it was DJ Academics. Like, DJ Academics said it the best. I'm not going to go off of Vlad, bro, because Vlad, Vlad says it too, but he's more of, like, a fed, bro. I don't know. <laughs> but like, oh like Vlad's a fit, bro. But yeah, DJ Academics, like, like, I'm not, bro. I don't know. I don't get into the politics all that shit, bro. But like, if you're a regular person, bro, like a actor, you know what I mean, or like just like a rap, like a rapper. But who's a rapper who doesn't really claim to be all that hard? You know, like, like a J Cole. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. if you're on that level, bro, obviously you need security, bro, and nobody's gonna look at you like you're weird. You know, because like you just you don't claim to be this guy. It's, oh, I'm untouchable. Right? Like, like, like. Let me think. Like, uh, let me think, bro. Who be out here just thinking their hardest fuck, bro? Like, 
We can say six nine, but like yeah. we already know that nigga got security. We know he's not rolling with no security out here, bro, for real. Well, to be honest, if you're smart, you're still gonna you're still gonna have security. Regardless. Regardless, I mean, like if you're going out in public, let's say you got twelve million monthly listeners on Spotify, bro, you're finna yeah. get recognized. People are finna come up to you. Literally. Like shit's gonna go down. Why does people well act like that shit? Stay safe. For real, bro. I don't know, like, yeah, like you said, bro, it's, it's better to stay safe than be out here looking stupid, bro. You're famous as hell, nigga. People recognize you. Oh, they don't recognize you, bro. These guys are disguised or something. Even on the days they don't want to be recognized, brother, you're going to get recognized. You're going to get recognized. That's like, one of the cons of being famous. Good thing I'm a homebody, bro. Literally. I ain't going out like that. I ain't be going out like that. So For real, bro. And when you run a meme page, bro, you really don't gotta show your face, honestly. You really don't. So, I mean, like, even kind of like with what I'm doing at the moment, I really don't have to as well. Exactly. Like, I don't think I've really been like, yo, this is what I look like on this shit. So, I really don't give a fuck, though. People on my page, they know what I look like. Like, mm-hmm. some people, you know, they know they know, bro. But I don't go really I go out of my way to, like, really care, show people, you know, like, I feel like. As of right now, I just want to be more like I'm gonna give you all the content y'all came here for. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm not really. Yeah. Uh huh. You be posting a know. lot too. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I just try to give people what they follow. There's too many people, bro. I feel like, like they got their craft right. Mm-hmm. You know, they're doing their shit, and then they just get off course, bro. Like for a little bit, you know, and that just fucks yeah. everything up. So I've just always tried to like, like with the meme page and everything, I've just always tried to give people what they want. And that's it as of right now. Lately, you know just stay off course. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you on that. You've been going crazy with that shit. You've been posting probably like two or three times a day or something like that. Yeah. Thank you, bro. It's, it's you crazy. Need some in the bathroom, I'm bad. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we, uh, lately, for like, trying to be like more productive and shit i've been um giving myself like a to-do list yeah hell yeah i've been like yo all right and it's satisfying too it gives me a little it it dings me at the end too but like i i have this to-do list so i'm like all right like because sometimes i like i be getting off track sometimes like i or something comes up and i forget like what's the main agenda for today yeah but it's kind of like having a planner. Like back in the day, I didn't really want to have a planner when I was a JIT. And I was like, I don't know if I'm ever going to use one. Yeah. I'm one now. So, like, yeah. Like, if you need to know, like, what you're going to do and you need to stay to it, like, yeah, definitely. Fucking find ways for you to stay to it so you don't get off track. And if you do yeah, that, you, you'll be in business. You'll be in a good standing. Hell yeah, bro. Like, it's better, to, like you said, bro. Having a plan, going into something, having a plan. So like, I want so in my dream car, right? It's not mm-hmm. even a dream, bro. Cause it's gonna happen. You know what I mean? I want a Dodge Charger SRT, right? Okay. So, uh, the first thing you gotta do, bro, to do like to like figure out what you're obviously gonna like, how you're gonna do the things you gotta do to get where you want what you wanna get or where you wanna be. Yeah. Like you gotta write it down. And you just gotta like you gotta do the steps, bro. Like you can't you can't just be like, oh yeah, I'm just save hella money, you know. You gotta go, literally, bro. You have to like plan it out. Like how much money do I need? You gotta figure out like how much money do I gotta put down? You know what time do I wanna have it by? Like you have to have a whole plan, bro. Like you know, how however you look at it as a plan, you know, like you know what I mean? Like I know what you and, mean. And that builds structure, bro. Because now you're not just like now you have a goal you're aiming for, like. Say you want that shit in the next three years. Let me, every year from now, let me save up 10K. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So when January 22, 22, 2022 starts, the whole year I have this to save 10K. You know what I mean? I want to I wanna have 10K by January 2023. And then another tip, 10K. And if that's what, if, you know what I mean? That's the plan mm-hmm. you got to have, bro. And that shit, like, like you said, bro, like, when you have that plan, bro, that's how you get going, for sure. I, I feel like a lot of people kind of forget that, that, like, planning and research phase. They think, all right, let me just, like, 
dive right into it and I'll kind of like learn on the fly. Which I yeah, mean, you no. can. You can sometimes. Like sometimes you will need to learn from experience. But yeah. other times you will need to know what you're doing before you jump right into it. Literally, bro. Because I'm not a car guy, bro. I don't know shit about cars like that. But not do I. For real, for real, bro. And like I've always wanted to Dodge Charger, though, you know? So like... Mm-hmm. Lately, I just been like, what am I? Got, what do I have to do to get that shit? You know, like, what would I have to do? How much do I have to work? How many hours do I have to work? You know, and I've been mm-hmm. just like calculating numbers and shit, and like, you know, like, and just like really taking it serious, bro. Because like, once you, bro, once you know what you want, bro, in life with anything, not just a car, not just money. Like, when you know what you want, if you want happiness, bro, what are you gonna do to get it? Who are you gonna like? Who are you gonna hang around? Who do you have to cut off? What are you gonna stop doing? You know what I mean? It's not just, oh, let me just wake up one day and I'm going to be changed. You know, it's the things you got to do, bro. Steps you got to take. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It should take so, time. Yeah, it takes time to build what you're trying to do. Like, with LTD, I couldn't just do this shit immediately. I couldn't. I had to get outside resources. I had to fucking. Like, thank God I knew how to edit a little bit at least beforehand too because if i if i did not have to learn that as well i'd have to learn a lot of things for this shit so you gotta know what the fuck you're trying to do if you know what you're trying to do um it's not impossible it's really not there's ways and there's methods to do everything you want to do in this world especially like in this day and age if you're trying to do like something on social media too like, bro, there's algorithms. Like, you can crack that shit. You can crack that shit if you figure it out. So Literally, bro. Like, bro, no no cocky shit, but I know anybody who's been following me, bro, since, like, last year knows I started off 2K followers, bro. You know, I used to, I, bro, I used to, like, not beg people, but, like, I used to really, like, I wanted people to fuck on my page so bad. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I, want, I wanted to... I wanted to be another meme page, you know, and like I wanted to give the times I wanted to give up, bro, and like oh yeah, shit, just fuck this shit, you know what I mean? Just push it to the side. That's something I've done all, all my life, bro. When something doesn't work out, you know, after a couple of months or maybe like just sub, like after like a a time, you feel like oh it should have been worked out by now, you mm-hmm. know? You like a lot of people, and this is how I used to be, bro. Like I just push it to the side, and I just like fuck it, you know. But you know, something just told me, bro, like. Let me just do one thing, right? Like, which is my meme page. Let me just do this mm-hmm. for a long time, like, consistently. And, like, like I promise, bro, that anybody who's listening to this shit, I know it sounds cliche. People say this. Bro, this is a guy, bro. We live in Minnesota. We're not in no Hollywood. We don't live in big-ass mansions and shit. Like, I'm telling you, this is a guy coming, just a normal kid, bro, like everybody else. If you just focus on one thing, bro. Just one thing and like put your all into it and I'm like just stay mm-hmm. consistent. Not don't even like don't even think about no one in the back of your mind. Okay, this is gonna work. You know it's gonna blow up, but don't have that as your main like. This is why I'm doing it. Do it because if you really want to do it, you're gonna do it regardless. You know, like I love making memes regardless of how many followers I have, bro. Like it's shit, it's funny as fuck. I got a following. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm making people laugh every day. That's really what I really do it for, bro. Is like I love making people laugh, but. If you have something that you want to do, bro, just do it for a long time, bro. If you play basketball and you want to get good, like you want to get better than you are right now, just play. Keep playing, bro. Just keep playing. If like with Jordan, bro, he has LTD. You know, he he knows that he wants to do it, so he just keeps doing it. You know, he's not doing it. Like I obviously want to get on a bigger scale. We're gonna get on a bigger scale, but you know, like we're doing this shit, bro. We're, just, we're not doing this for no validation. We're doing this shit because like we're trying to just. We're, we're, you know what I mean, bro? Like, we're, we like, yeah. doing like mm-hmm. so, like, yeah, bro. If there's anything that you want to do in life, just focus on it. Like, put your, all your focus into it and just stay consistent at it and, like, just keep going, bro. Because I promise you, all the work you put into that shit will pay off. That's facts. Um, I think we should get on to the next story because we Definitely. still, like, yeah. we still got, yeah. like, three more stories to go through. So, yeah, for sure. <laughs> all right. Um, second story. Blueface and his crew. I don't know if it's actually his crew. Three people that he was with, they um they fuck up a club bouncer, and it's on video too. So um we'll make sure to pull it up on screen if you're on YouTube watching this shit.
ruthlessly attacking yeah. a doorman at a Guinea's Lounge in San Fernando Valley on Sunday night. But uh, you kind of watch the video. He, he Blueface doesn't act, exactly throw the first punch, but let, let's let's keep on going into it. Um, so uh, it's allegedly stated that um the bouncer didn't let Blueface in because he didn't have his ID. And uh, shit hit the fan then. <laughs> Uh, Blueface got a streak with bouncers, so I mean, maybe dude should have saw this shit coming. But uh, what do you think about the video, bro? Bro, honestly, so when I was watching it, when I first was watching, I I was like, yo, Blueface not even hitting this dude at all, like, cause you look in the video and he didn't obviously didn't throw that the first punches or nothing like that. Like he watched yeah. his friends do it, so I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, like where's where's he hitting them at, cause. Watch the video, y'all. The, the camera angle changes where you can't even see Blueface anymore. That's, like, early in the video. But then you can see, like, obviously you can see the camera angle change. And, yeah. well, not change, but they get back into the camera where it's facing. And this nigga Blueface is fucking stopping the dude out, bro. Like, there was no need for that at all, bro. I feel like your homie's already taking care of it. You know, he's, you know, he's doing what they, they, they doing what they got to do, whatever, I guess. And you, bro, and you're this famous, bro. Like, obviously, bro, nobody knows who these dudes are. You're the person who got the attention, you know what I mean? Like, nobody knows your crew, bro. That's what I'm so, saying. Uh, like, the reports I mean? like, to three other men, they didn't even, like, they ain't got yeah, names yeah. on them, bro. Literally, bro. Like, they don't know your crew, bro. They know, the only person they know is you. That's why it looks so bad, because if it was just three dudes stop out of bouncer, that's not making the news, bro. But it's Blueface and three and his crew make. You know what I mean? Like, so mm-hmm. you're the so obviously you didn't throw the first punches, bro. And we can't hear what the bouncer was saying, but it made the news because it's you, it's Blueface. You know, like it, it just looks bad. That makes you look bad, bro. Like it makes you look so bad. He even like posted about it too. So he posted something on Instagram, and uh, this the caption's now deleted because people found out about it, obviously. And the caption said, "You need people like me." To- to point the finger at and say that's the bad guy. So like a Scarface quote. Why are you doing that, bro? Like, <laughs> yeah, bro, he made it worse. Like, yeah, like I know it's obviously for like the the hard guy image and shit like that. But like you're just incriminating yourself, bro. And he, their his managers must have actually he doesn't have a manager. He must have figured that shit out later, and uh deleted the caption. The picture's still up though. Yeah, bro, I don't understand these rappers, bro. It's like you got the money. And you got everything you could possibly want, bro. Like, you're living a life that you probably wanted to live your whole life. Mm-hmm. And you just, bro, you're taking it for granted, bro. Like, by just doing reckless shit. I don't understand, bro. There's so many people who want, who pray to be in that position. And there's people out, like, Blueface just doing reckless shit, bro. And, like, just tarnishing their name. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I don't see why you got to do that one year. Especially, bro, like, bro. I don't think he was like performing or nothing like that. You can go to another club, go to another That's one. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, bro, <laughs> aren't you in California, bro? I bet there's a fucking million clubs there, bro. Like, That's like why you saying, need to be man. exactly at that one, bro? He was in the valley, so I mean, like, like there's definitely like some clubs around there and shit too. Should have just like cussed the motherfucker out and left. And we've like, seen Blueface's house. Like, go start a party, bro. Go throw a party. You know what I mean, like. I bet if you, I bet if you really mm-hmm. wanted to, you could get all the people from that club to go to your house. <laughs> like you're Blueface, bro. <laughs> like you're not on Drake's level, but you still got a name. You know, you're Blueface. If people know you. That's what I'm saying. Just like it was a house party or something. Literally, bro. All right, all right let's let's move on to the the third story. So this one, <laughs> this one I believe happened at the Met. Uh, the Met happened earlier this week, and. So reports claim that Conor McGregor wanted a picture with MGK, but was denied. Apparently, he got all heated about that. Maybe MGK said something to him, but we don't know what he said. That's what all the reports said as well. Um, then McGregor just starts throwing punches. Too far away, though. Ain't land shit. His teams, they kind of like separated each other and shit. MGK really wasn't phased by anything, bro. Like If you see like some other videos about it, like, he really wasn't on anything, to be honest. And then you got McGregor claiming later on 
there's this quote that he says, nothing happened with me. I only fight real fighters, people that actually fight. You know what I mean? I certainly don't fight little vanilla white boy rappers. I don't even know the guy. I don't even know anything about him, except that he's with Megan Fox. So Yeah, bro. Maybe you should like, hit Shorty up. Yeah, bro. Um, if he did throw punches, I'm, he's lucky that bitch didn't connect. That nigga would be in jail right now. He He's lucky that... For, for real, though, he's lucky that they didn't connect because of his contracts. Yeah, I exactly. kind of, like, broke his ankle and some shit earlier this year but that i mean he's still under contract by the ufc you know yeah, dana, don't, don't, dana don't like that shit for real for real like i don't understand i don't know how um like the ufc politics work and like the rules mm-hmm. but i do know that like professional boxers and like professional fighters like if they use their hands outside of that shit like they're right because their hands are literally like could kill someone you know what i mean they know how to kill someone bro Mm-hmm. So like I know if they do that shit outside of their profession, like that shit is not it, bro. Like you know. So they have to act really professional when it comes to like these type of situations. Whereas like, like a rapper, like we were talking about before, they would just start popping off on someone. Literally. But like, if someone like a UFC fighter, if they if it was Blueface versus Conor McGregor. Yeah, yeah, for real. Like Blueface would be lucky that McGregor wouldn't swing, bro. Because he would put Literally. him to sleep. Because, bro, I've seen a thing. It says rappers want to be athletes and rapper and athletes want to be rappers. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's, that's how it goes, bro. The sports world and the music world really go hand in hand. Literally. Because the culture, it's all, bro. It's all pretty much one big family. Like You yeah. have someone like Master P who was rapping for a long fucking time. And then he got a spot on the Raptors. You yep. got all these, like... J. Cole was playing in, like, Rwanda or something like that this past year. Yep. So, I mean, yeah, this, it goes hand in hand, which I really fuck with. Yeah, I like, like that aspect of it, because, bro, it, that, when you look at it like that, it gets pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie, like, mm-hmm. cause, like, a lot of the, like, inspiration that these, like, these athletes get, bro, comes from music, like, you know yeah. what I mean, when they work out, when they train, and then, when the rappers need, like, punchlines and and uh, metaphors and shit and like just shit that like goes together like they they look into the the like the sports world, bro. You know, mm-hmm. like exactly. Oh, so a lot of the shit they say, like it, I don't know, it just goes together. Like this, the entertainment world is crazy because I mean, like it's two different forms of media. So like, you can music is forever. Music yeah, and sports yeah. is is a long term fucking thing. Yeah. So, you're even if you're like not that into sports, you're still gonna like kind of know some people or like kind of be kind of fuck with like your hometown teams, and you're always yeah, gonna yeah. love music. Everyone loves music, so definitely, yeah, yeah. bro. Because I literally was, bro, I was at work, and you know, like I try to like I'm, I keep to myself and shit, but there's some people that I fuck with. They're cool, you know, mm-hmm. and like I asked this one dude, right. And he's white. I'm not going to lie. And, like, I asked him. I'm like, I was like, yo, bro, like, what type of music you listen to? I was like, you heard Kanye album or Drake? And he told me, he was like, I'm not going to lie, bro. Like, I don't even listen to music. And I was just thinking, I'm like, bro, like, music is literally, like, it soothes the soul, bro. Like, like you know what I mean? Like, it literally heals. It's so hard to, like, think that people don't listen to music sometimes, bro. Because I know that how I lose, use music in my life. You know, like, I use it as, like, a, you know, it can be a therapeutic, you know? Mm-hmm. It can be really therapeutic, bro. And it helps me get through a lot of tough times, like, you know? And I can relate to that shit. So, like, to just think that some people really out here, not, not, I mean, I'm not even just thinking about, like, the music that, that I listen to, like, they would listen to, you know? I'm, I'm like, you don't listen to no music, though. Like, you classical. listen to nothing? Yeah, nothing, bro. Like, I was just like, what the hell? I don't know if I've ever met anyone like that, to be honest, who doesn't listen to any, like, type of music. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. People just, like, listen to music because they don't want to listen to white noise. Like, deadass people, like, like, need something in the background sometimes. Like, that's that's weird, bro. That's weird. For real, bro, because, like, you know, like you said, like, background noise, bro. Like, even then, like, when I work at my job, like, we got music playing and shit. And I heard mm-hmm. when music is playing, 
it makes people want to shop more. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I've heard. Yeah, because I feel like if it was just like no noise, it would just be kind of kind of weird, bro. You could just kind of like hear people's feet shuffling and shit. Yeah, it's for real, for real. Like, yeah. it's like, like having a no laugh track on like a sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying, and like, at least for the people that they're trying to go for, it's music that they know too. So, yep. Like maybe you'll you'll hear a song that you actually fuck with, and you're like, oh, like that's dope. Like they got this shit in in the supermarket right now. Yeah, because at my shit they play like all the like they just play shit you would know, bro. Like hits, you know, Justin Bieber, Taylor Swift, mm-hmm. like shit that's made the charts, obviously. Yeah. Man, I wish my work played like more rap music and shit, but it's it's not the demographic, yeah. bro. It's not the demographic they're looking for. It's our, literally our, our demographic's too old. That's the thing. Yeah, bro. like they're going yeah. for like like forty, like thirty five or like forty five and up. So I'm yeah, like, exactly. All right, they ain't, they ain't listening to no J Cole right now, and they ain't listening to no Six Nine. <laughs> for real, they ain't on Chris. Cause literally, bro, the closest thing they have at my job to like rap music, if you want to even consider it, and it's not even consider rap music, is uh, mm. the weekend. Yeah, he's just, um, yeah, he's more like a like a. I don't even know if I want to call him like a pop. He's like a like a pop R and B like type of type of clusterfuck. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's not even considered rap music. So I was just. Like yeah. the last time I heard rap music at a place that I worked was I think I heard like Lucid Dreams or something when that shit was when that shit was out like a oh, year yeah. or two ago. But that it was already way too overplayed. Rest in peace, Juice. But I'm sorry, that song is overplayed. Yeah, bro. When it first came out, like what 2018? Mm-hmm. That shit was fire, bro. See, I knew about fire. Juice before he blew up. <laughs> Yeah, lie. same, bro. I'm not bro. gonna lie. Like the first song I heard by him was "Autograph." Um, same. He did that, bro. Yeah. I heard an "Autograph." Um, I could probably name some more, but it's kind of slipping my mind. I also knew Dude. about Sofago for like two years before he blew up. Yeah, you put me on the Sofago. Shout out Jordan for putting me on Sofago, bro. Cause that was when Knock Knock was at like maybe like two thousand likes. Oh God, that shit was low, bro. That shit was low as fuck. I was banging that song like all of 2018, pretty much, bro. Yeah, bro. So Fago, bro. That shit crazy, bro. So many people out here blowing up like nothing. That's what I'm saying, bro. They kind of like, I like when I find a rapper before they blow up. Like, that just makes yes. me feel like good know, for some reason. Yeah, it makes you feel like, damn, I found a gym. Especially like gym. doing with like this LTD shit. So it's like, I kind of like when I find those gems. Definitely, bro. You got it, next, bro. It's gonna be crazy, bro. Cause like, obviously, you're gonna keep doing LTD, and you're gonna find somebody, bro, who is just starting out, and you know, and they're probably gonna start fucking with LTD, posting their mm-hmm. music. Yeah, that shit gonna take off, bro. Here's hoping, bro. You never know who it'll be, bro. Gotta just keep traveling, you know. Keep finding new talent. Damn, bro. I need to. I need to get out of where I am right now, or at least like go to like Detroit or something. Yeah, bro, Detroit, bro. You already know they got the key to underground right now. They really do. Oh. Like and Yachty, he's he's helping them out. Yeah, like that whole um that Michigan boy boat album. Fire. Pretty fire. That shit's it fire. Pretty fire. I'm not like the biggest fan of Detroit music, but I'm like I'm a, a big fan of the beats. So when yeah, I find oh my gosh. like a certain rapper that like like slides on that motherfucker, then yeah. like I'll fuck with it a lot. Yeah, bro, the beats be going crazy. That's why y'all do it so nice. Yeah, bro. Yachty, you turn those beats just so effortlessly. It brings me back to like like Shoreline Mafia type of beats. Yeah, so, for real. They're like they they're kind of similar if you think about it. Yeah, um, definitely. Not really fuck with those type of beats too, and that was kind of like the wave before this last one, maybe a couple waves ago. <laughs> like shit's been going down. Um, yeah, like that's kind of like what I first started 
when I first really got serious into making music, I was like, all right, let me hop on a Shrine Mafia type beat because some bitches go crazy. Oh, yeah. And I would still hop on one of those bitches today. God, bro. Somebody told me, like, they look at Detroit as, like, the next, like, how how L.A. music was, like, really popular, you know? And, mm-hmm. like, they said that's how Detroit's going to come up. And I can see it, too, bro, because, like, Detroit has this, like, this sound, bro, that's just, like, so smooth. And I, you can tell a lot of them be freestyling and shit. Yeah. And it's just the way they, like, they put, like, I don't know. It's just the way they come off of those beats, bro. It's like they, like they, they'll say anything, and it, it will sound nice, bro. Like they won't even be like, like if you go to like Lil Yachty and uh, fuck, what's his name, bro? Um, fuck, bro, I don't even know his name. Fucking not Baby Smooth. It's a, it's another Detroit rapper, bro. But like they just okay. go on the beats and be talking shit, bro. Like, like they don't even be saying shit that really like makes sense. But this it's so dude. fire. This one dude I'm a fan of is BFB to Pac Man. Oh yeah, I know him. Yeah. Yeah, like that's that one dude who's he's probably still working UPS or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Delivery but like shit. he he funny as fuck, bro. He's funny as fuck. There's this one oh, yeah. song he has with a guab dad. He got the funniest fucking verse on that shit, bro. And he, and it goes hard too. Like that that motherfucker be hidden. Hell yeah. Like it's just a whole different thing, bro. So like yeah, I know what you mean. Where Detroit music is gonna, it's it's going somewhere. Definitely, it really bro. Is. Definitely. Um, let's let's kind of move over towards our last subject. Do you wanna kind of get this one going a little bit? Yeah, let me look at the note. So yeah, we're gonna talk about meditation, anxiety, and like depression and shit. I know, like, if y'all gonna uh, watch this podcast, I'm probably gonna be the one more to talk about like the type of shit because <laughs> I guess I'm like. <laughs> This is on my ID and shit, but yeah. yeah, like you know, like lately, you know, I'm not gonna lie, like I smoke. I can, I probably think that a lot of people who are gonna watch this probably smoke and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like you know, like I think smoking, bro. I think when it's not being used as like an, uh, a lot of people use that shit as like an escape. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and that's where it can get so bad, bro. Where you just smoking and you trying to like rely on that shit. Mm. for everything you know that's where it gets so bad but like i've meditated and i know it sounds corny bro like you know when i was and I, when i didn't really like understand this shit i used to think oh that shit corny bro meditation don't work you just closing your eyes you know but i promise you y'all like when you really just folks sit there right like you can do it when your whole family is asleep i like to do it like when i know i'm not doing anything like i'm not going nowhere i know like i'm not nobody's gonna call me like so, like that's more like late at night, you know, like like twelve at night, some shit. Just some time when you know you're gonna be alone, and like you just sit there, bro, and you focus, bro, and like you just you got you think about all your thoughts, all your like everything you want to affirm. I mean, not, by affirm, I mean like everything you want to gain, you want to attract to you, and you just sit there, bro, and like you listen to some nice calm music, bro, and it's gonna relax your mind, bro, and like. And I brought smoking into play because, like, if you smoke, bro, and then you go meditate, I promise you, bro, you'll have an experience that you never thought you could have, bro. And, and that's and that's in a positive way. I don't mean that in, that, like, a negative way. I know what and you like, mean, though, right? It's, it's, yeah. it's bringing on a whole different type of vibes. All right. Yeah. You can continue, though. My bad. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you're good, bro. You're good. But, yeah, bro, it does bring on, a, 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 like, a different vibe, bro. Like, you know, once I started really using weed as a way to, like, focus on my like everything that I want to do, you know, like rather than just smoking to smoke, you know, a lot of people out here, like, I don't know. I can't speak for nobody, bro, but I know there's a lot of people who don't really like do anything after they smoke, you know, they'll go and fucking get a burrito or some shit or like go to Taco Bell and yeah. sit on their ass, you know, like, and that's, bro, that's, that's great. You know, like if you on your own time, I feel like when you, bro, I feel like weed is better when you know you worked hard, you know, mm-hmm. you did, got your shit done. And you were productive, you know what I mean? Or if it makes you productive, I guess, you know, in that sense. But, yeah, like, I use it, bro, I've been using it in ways to, like, just help me relax, bro. Because, Mm -hmm. you know, like, it's so easy in this world right now, bro, to just be so anxious and just tired and just, like, you know, you feel like you got to watch your back all the time. And you feel like, oh, like, if I do this, then that person is going to say this, you know. And if I 
if I do that, bro, then what is, what will they say, you know? And, like, mm-hmm. that goes hand-in-hand hand with, with anxiety, bro. It's all about anxiety. I feel like, bro, if I can describe anxiety, I feel like it's, like, not knowing what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, not knowing, like, what. And it's, and it's things you can control, too, bro. Like, I don't know. Like, it's like if you you got if you're anxious about like oh is my is my business gonna do well like that shit you can control you can control how well your business does honestly if we're being honest like it all goes into how you want to do it how you want to how much time you're letting to put into it and like like not knowing like if these people fuck with you and uh not knowing if uh i don't know you're good enough or whatever you know what i mean but it's just like it's all shit that like like you that, that shit doesn't even matter you know what i mean yeah, and like, yeah. So somebody told me anxiety is really just not knowing, like, like not having a, like a. You don't know about the future yet. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. obviously, we don't know the future, but the future comes about. It comes how the future comes about is what we do in the present. You know what I mean? Exactly, like, bro. Mm-hmm. so like everything we do right now, bro, is the future. Like mm-hmm. how much work we're putting in, how much hours we're putting out of work. Like you can't go and complain about how much money you're making if you know you're not putting enough hours in. You know what I mean? Like you can't like be like, oh yeah, like I'm not getting paid enough. Well, you, did you work the hours? You know what I mean? Like did you, yeah. did you did you go to your shifts? Like that shit you could control, bro. Mm-hmm. So like that's anxiety, bro. I feel like anxiety is shit that you really can control. Meditation, bro. I gotta tell y'all how to do that shit. Just turn on some. I do 432 hertz music, bro. Like if you know what that is, it's like has a frequency of like just relaxation like it just makes you calm bro it's like really like it really helps you focus so and uh maybe jordan could put that shit in the link like in the bio or maybe i don't know but like we'll think about that later but let me move on to depression bro i feel like depression comes on for a lot of depression bro it's the music we listen to it's the people we're around it's the things we eat it's um the influences in our life you know the the things we're watching on TV and like and so definitely social media, bro. Social media, I probably think is one of the biggest causes of that shit. I feel like, bro, in this world, everybody like I said it in the last podcast, everybody is trying to base their life around what people got on social media, like, and that's not the way to go, bro. It's actually like, that's like the worst way to go, bro. Because bro, these people on social media, these rappers, these 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 models, bro, these these influencers, they're only showing you what they want you to see. At the end of the day, nobody's going to show you what they don't want you to see. Unless there's really somebody out here who's like, okay, I'm going to show you my struggle. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to turn it into a blessing. You know what I mean? Like, that's in the only sense I could think of. But even myself, bro, like, and I, can, I, I'm not, I can't speak for, lot, like, everybody. But I can probably, like, assume, bro, that nobody's going to show you, like, the dark days of their life. You know what I mean? They're going to only show you what, like, they want you to see. That's mm-hmm. the tr- the trips they take, the 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 car they just got, the clothes they just got, the followers that they have, bro. You know what I mean? Like no nobody's gonna show you them crying. I mean, some girls will, and some niggas will that's cry. That's TikTok, but, bro. That's yeah, like TikTok's the only app to do that. Literally, bro. And like, bro, in that sense, nobody's gonna show you compassion, bro, over social media. Like nobody cares, bro. They're gonna keep mm-hmm. clicking. There, everybody, bro. Social media is a click, click, click. It's click, bro. It's, you, you see what you want and you click. You know what I mean? Nobody's focused. Yeah. Like, like that's why our attention spans are so short, bro. As, te- as this generation, we can't, like, it's so hard to, for people to focus. That's one thing I'm trying to, like, work on is just my focus. Because that's why, like, like, earlier in the podcast, I said, like, focus on one thing. You know what I mean? And I'm getting better at that. But mm-hmm. that's why a lot of pizza spans, bro, are so bad in, like, real life. You get around some, like, say you get around somebody, bro, and, you know, like, one of your friends, right? And, like, you just notice, like, they keep going on their phone and shit, even when you're talking to them. You like, that's, it, social media is making our attention span so bad. It's like, like, people feel like they gotta check their phone every two seconds. They're miss, if they don't check their phone, they're missing out. And then that's where depression comes in, bro, because you see all these people on social media. You see the things they have. You feel like you're not good enough. You feel like, oh, this person has that. This person got that. And... That's one reason it's so good to just get off your phone, bro. Don't even check your phone when you wake up. Like, in my sense, you know, I, I'm doing a podcast, so, like, I had to, you know. But, like, in other senses, bro, when you, like, to start your day, it shouldn't be to check your phone, bro. Like, maybe in, like, maybe for, like, five minutes, but then get off of it. Get up. 
that shit, like, you, when you see that shit right when you wake up, it, like, programs your mind to, like, okay, this is what we're going to do today. We're just going to keep checking our phone. We're just going to see what people are doing. And by the time you know it, your day's already over. See, that's the one thing I do like about TikTok, because I was scrolling on TikTok last night for, like, I don't even know how long. I lost track of time. And then, yeah. you know, when you get to that point where it's, like, you see that, like, that TikTok from TikTok telling you to stop watching TikTok. Yeah. Exactly, where it's like bro. like time to get off your phone it's like that shit really works if you look at the metrics that shit really works definitely like, people bro. Will be like yo they'll be like oh shit like i have this to do i have this to do or it's like it's four in the morning i should go to sleep For like, real. Like, yeah so it would be more good if like these platforms kind of like told you or reminded you like hey it's you've been on here for quite a long time maybe it's time to get off for right now yeah definitely oh. bro Cause it, it, it's so easy to just get carried away, bro. I can't act like I don't do it either. There's times, bro, I'll be on Instagram for like, I, like I'll be on there for like 30 minutes, bro. And then I realize, like, what the fuck? Like, I mm. didn't even do this shit yet. And like, I didn't do this. And like, yeah, you know, and I just, bro, I hate starting my day off. It's like going on social media, scrolling and seeing what people are the fuck are doing, you know? Like, you got to worry about yourself right away. That's what I'm saying. First, when you wake up, the first person that should matter is you, bro. It shouldn't matter, bro. Like, this person, what they're doing. And and I feel like that's just one thing, bro, that really has people misconstrued. It's just, like, they feel like that's just a priority. It's not a priority, bro. We know we... Phones, bro, honestly, the only thing we really need a phone for is to call people, if we're being honest. Like, if I'm being so honest, like, that was, like, the whole reason a phone came out. We were lucky to have the shit that's been added. You know, like, like that social ass, media. Bro. Mm-hmm. Instagram, Snapchat. Like, we don't need this shit. Do we really need... Let's be honest, bro. Do we really need Snapchat? If you're being honest, like... No. I, mean, I see I see people leading that shit every single day now. Literally. I like, guess another way to communicate, but, like... That shit, we don't need that shit, bro. We don't need Instagram. Like, obviously, I need Instagram right now. So, it's mm-hmm. what I'm doing. To, like, it's my brand. But, like, we don't need this shit, bro. Like... If it's Snapchat or Facebook or if Instagram or or Twitter was to get deleted right now, bro, like, I think I would still be living my normal life, bro. I'd still be going to work. As much as I'd be like, damn, like, my meme page, bro, that's fucked up. But, like, you know, I'm still here, still alive, bro. We've been here without social media. We'll be here after social media. Yeah. You got to find a way to, t- like, to detach from, like, social media and your phone. Like uh, what I did, I think I did this like last, last, uh, last fall, and um, I just like woke up, and I immediately kind of put my phone on D and D. So I was like, yeah, definitely. Just, like, and then I just like didn't look at it until the end of the day, and I did that for like three, four days or something like that, and then yep. I just I just stopped looking at my phone. Like I'd be forgetting to like put my phone in my pocket sometimes when I go places or something. Yep. Bro, bro, like, you know, and like, I don't know, like, I just feel like we're better off, bro. With, with I mean, like, obviously, we need our phone to communicate mm-hmm. and all that shit. But like, honestly, I feel like everything that is on our phones right now, all that apps, social media, like, like, realistically, I feel like we're better off without it, bro. Should we just go back like, to flip phones? Honestly, bro. Honestly. Yeah. Low key, bro. Like, if you look at flip phones now, they have Snapchat. Like, you can download Snapchat on those hoes. Are you serious? Cause um, flip phones now these days run a version of Android. So yeah. Oh yeah, it's fair. So I mean, yeah, if you got Android, you got iOS on there. You can download anything from the App Store. So you got motherfuckers using <laughs> anything on a flip phone now. If you can, if you got it, I guess. Yeah, bro. Honestly, bro, like. I don't know, like, I just feel like if I didn't have, if I didn't, if I wasn't, like, building my brand up for what I'm doing, mm-hmm. I, I'd be so ducked off, bro, if I'm being honest. Like, I don't like posting that much on Instagram, like, on my regular Instagram. Yeah. I, I got posted a picture, bro, and I just deleted it. I'm like, I don't even care about these likes, these comments, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, but, like. I don't know. It's it's different with my meme page, bro, because I enjoy doing that shit. You know, like I I actually like 
I have fun doing that shit because I love interacting with the people who follow me. Yeah. I love just post. I love making people laugh, but that's like, like that's just fun to me, you know. Mm-hmm. So like, but I don't know, like, I just feel like I'm better off without all the other shit, bro. Like all the other shit is just it's not needed, bro. I'm trying to just focus on myself. Social media takes you takes you away from who you, who you are. It tries to make you like everybody else, bro. That's why there's trends. That's why things trend on there. Mm-hmm. That's why. That's why you see all these people fucking doing the same trend. Like when a trend comes out, you see everybody doing it. Look at the crate challenge, bro. Some oh, nigga, like somebody just made that shit trend, and then everybody started doing it, bro. Because people are sheep. That like, ass, and it's, it's fucking people up too, bro. Like they go in the hospital for that shit too. Literally, people are sheep, bro. You, you or, bro. I promise you, a, a challenge will come out in two weeks. And it, you'll see, you'll see everybody doing it for probably like another two weeks, and then it's like the crate challenge is gonna die out. Yeah, that's how that's it is with everything, bro. That's how that's how mm-hmm. it was with the ALS ice bucket challenge. You remember that shit, bro? Everybody yeah. was doing. I mean, that was for a good cause though, but still, it yeah. trends, bro. Trends, bro. Trends, trends. And somebody who sets these trends, bro. I don't want to be a trend follower. I want to be a trend setter. Yeah, you want to be a trend setter. Got to figure out what the fuck to do for the next trend. See, that's something I don't, like, that's a whole different algorithm, bro. Like, to yeah. discover a trend before it happens. Yeah, for real. Like, you gotta go into, like, analytical shit. Figure out, like, alright, what's, like, a popping term? Like, a search term? But it's not super, like, up there just yet. And you don't necessarily know if it's gonna trend or not. It's kind Literally, of a yeah. Cause you, it's bro, a gamble. Because the first person to do those, like, those, like, crates, right? I don't know who it was. Mm-hmm. They probably posted that shit on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. It was probably funny. And somebody, and I bet they didn't even think of it to just blow up. But it did. Mm-hmm. And, you know what I mean? And they, they started a trend that they didn't know about, bro. Like, they were probably just at, like, the family cookout doing some goofy shit. And it went viral. Like. Pain, pain goes viral, bro. If you see someone fall. Yeah, definitely. Like, it's it's going to get some views and shit. If you're going out for a trend and you're trying to find one, you're trying to make one, definitely, like, I'm not saying, like, you should get people hurt, but it, it wouldn't, like, hurt the views, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah. Yep, bro. All right. I think this is a good uh, stopping point. We, we've we been on here for a minute. It, it was a good <laughs> podcast, though. This was great, bro. This is great. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Tune in next Sunday again for episode four where we talk about whatever the fuck going on and whatever the fuck we want so it's say uh, bro it's crazy we really three episodes in bro that's all i'm saying two. like we're about to hit double digits real fast and not even like think about it hell yeah so, bro all right y'all i hope y'all enjoyed this episode and yes, sir. Yeah, peace out y'all have a good day